Anxiety over the Zika virus continues to build. In Florida, where there are at least nine cases of the illness, Governor Rick Scott declared a health emergency in four counties today, including Miami-Dade. Zika has been found in more than 25 countries in the Americas and the Caribbean. Nearly all cases come from mosquitoes, and the CDC issued a tra new travel advisory today for Jamaica. At the same time, public health officials say they want to learn more about a reported case of sexual transmission of Zika in Texas. We look at some of the central questions with Dr. Michael Osterholm, director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Thank you for joining us. How worried should we be with these new reports every day, these new classifications every day of this new uh, virus? Well, first of all, the fact that there's been a case now documented of sexual transmission doesn't surprise us. That's already happened before. Uh, the question is how often it will occur. And at this point, we don't have any evidence it's a frequent occurrence. But clearly, for those who travel from uh, the United States to one of these affected countries, and a male coming back having sex with uh, his female partner, who either may be pregnant or could become pregnant, is a concern. And in that sense, that's what we need to be most worried about. How significant is a WHO call or dec declaration of emergency in this case? Well, first of all, to really understand the, this concept of emergency, what it really does is it just helps prioritize uh, the kind of resources and the importance to the world that this is. It shouldn't mean that people should panic or that people should uh, somehow uh, do something very, very different. What we need to do, and we know how to do it actually, is what we do, what we call source reduction for the mosquitoes in, in the Americas, meaning let's get rid of the breeding sites. This particular mosquito is really what I would call the Norway rat of mosquitoes. It lives with humans, it loves to live in the human home, it, it breeds in water bodies that occur, for example, in a pop cap or a piece of discarded tin foil, uh, non-biodegradable materials, tires. If we clean up the, the solid waste, the garbage really around our communities in those co uh, counties and countries where this is occurring, we can have a great impact on uh, the transmission of this virus by this mosquito. So focusing on the mosquitoes is what they call vector control. How much attention should be spent on that and how much on developing a vaccine? Well, first of all, there is no one answer. It's all of the answers. Uh, you want to do as much as you can with the source reduction, meaning get rid of where they breed. This type of mosquito is very different than, for example, the one that causes malaria in most instances, which might be in large bodies of water, in rice fields, and so forth. This is really breeding in very, very small bodies of water, as I said, such as might be in a discarded wrapper inside a tire. The second thing is you want to make sure that if you can kill the adults, you do that. Uh, but that by itself is not enough. That's often a great photo opportunity to show someone out with a spraying machine, but uh, that is really not it. You want to do all of that, plus you want to work on vaccines. You want to uh, look at, can you use genetically modified mosquitoes? So all of these are things that should be brought to bear. And I think the point that's been missed here in this country is that this mosquito has already been causing very serious death uh, disease and death in uh, South America, Central America already with dengue and another uh, virus called chikungunya. And uh, so by taking care of uh, the Zika virus, we actually end up taking care of all these other ones. So this is similar rather than different from something like the dengue virus, which last we were talking about that was in 2013, I think. Right, exactly. And as you know, uh, on this very uh, program, there's been discussions about how many thousands of people have died, uh, how many people have had serious illness. In a sense, if you take care of dealing with, uh, with uh, the, any one of these viruses, you take care of all of them. And so while the, what has happened really is because of the issue with microcephaly and this uh, very, very horrible image of these children with these very small heads, uh, the world has now paid attention. This yeah. has now become a photo opportunity kind of crisis. So now that the world and, is paying uh, attention. That wasn't the case with dengue. Right. So now that the world is paying attention, what are the questions that should be getting asked which are not yet? Well, first of all, we have to find out just how bad this disease really is, meaning in terms of number of cases. There is no doubt that microcephaly or these small heads uh, in newborns as in small brains, as well as the uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, this type of paralysis disease, is occurring because of Zika. What we have to understand is, in fact, how frequently it's occurring.